May the joy and the hope and the peace found in Christ be yours again today. And may this message reach your heart in a rich and personal way. Amen. He was a man who had it all. More possessions, more power, more position than any other man that lived at that time. His name was King Solomon. In addition to the power, possessions, and position that he had, he had more wisdom than any other man, and he had 1,000 women at his beck and call. He was a man who had it all. Indeed, he had access to even more, and the book of Ecclesiastes is a summary of his search for more of life, more meaning in life, more purpose in life. In a summary, meaningless, meaningless, it's all meaningless. Solomon could have been living today. His book of Ecclesiastes could be written today and applied to our culture. If we tried to summarize the message of marketing today in America, it would come down to a single word, more. One four-letter word, more. You need to have more to be content. You're unsatisfied now. Have more of what this world has to offer. We as human beings have three levels of involvement in this world. We have needs, we have wants, and we have desires. We want to have something meaningful. We desire to have something beautiful. And God meets our need and not our wants and desires. Today we're going to focus in on that thought that with God, less is more. That indeed we find more of life by having less things that surround us. You know, if you look at the Old Testament, one of the challenges that God's people faced is they were searching for more as well. They were telling God, in essence, you haven't given us enough. Not enough water, not enough food, not enough gods. We need more. And God continued to remind his people that he was their sufficiency, that he would meet their need. And indeed he did, time and time again. We take a look at the New Testament, we find Jesus, Sermon on the Mount, where he says, where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. And he summarized it this way, he says, don't store up for yourself treasures here on earth where wrath, rust and moth destroy, and thieves come in and destroy and steal. But store up for your things in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, and thieves do not steal. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. Sometimes less is more. Less of what the world distracts us and more of what attracts us back to God as the center of our life. Many years ago, I had the chance to do, go on a servant event to Tijuana, Mexico. We built a 12 foot by 12 foot home for a family of five. There was no electricity, no sewer system, no running water. And yet when we handed those keys off to the father of that family, there was joy like they'd never felt before because they had a house of their own. They had 144 square feet of joy. I take a look at the apartment we live in right now, which is 1,000 square feet, which means it's far larger than that house. And we have an apartment for two. And this was a family of five but they had never had a house before. They knew that God had provided for them in a rich and personal way. And so we come to our gospel reading this morning. We find Jesus using one of his favorite techniques for teaching, parables, stories within stories that shared a deep personal message, a spiritual message. And the curious thing is, the majority of Jesus' sermons had something to do with money. Jesus was well aware of the fact one of our greatest distractions in this world is the idea that we need to have more money. We need to have more zeros after that first number. We need to win that lottery, now over a billion dollars. Can you imagine 
What a treasure that would be. Would it be a delight? Or would it be a disaster? Because all too often, when we have too much, more and more and more, all we need are more storage sheds to put all that stuff in that we thought we needed, but really didn't after all. So there's this man in the crowd that says, Jesus, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus, in essence, says, what business is that of mine? But then he goes on to say, be on your guard against all covetousness, because your life does not consist in the possessions of your life. There was a rich man who had a bumper crop, and he said to himself, what will I do with all the abundance that I have? I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger barns, and then I'll have ample room for all the crops and grain that I have. And then I can relax, eat, drink, and be merry, for I have ample goods for many years. And Jesus comes on the scene. He says, you fool. Tonight, your life is required of you. Then who will gain all these possessions and all this abundance that you have? Who will you pass it on to? So it is with anyone who stores up for himself treasures here on earth, but not as rich toward God. You know, sometimes the riches in our life come by our giving of ourselves in meaningful ways. Like the Stephen Ministry Program, where we have a chance to reach out with love to those in desperate need. You, as one who has a heart for Christ and for people, can be one of those that shares with that person your comfort, your support, your encouragement. You can be that caregiver, and Christ will be the cure giver that oversees that life situation and provides for what that person needs. But right now, they just need someone that they can talk with openly, confidentially, and share the deeper thoughts of their heart. Christ-centered people offering Christ-centered care, giving more just as Christ has given more of himself. Yes, the key to the message is this whole idea that God uses the KISS principle. Keep it simple and sufficient. Keep it simple and sufficient. The simple things we do that make a world of difference in our lives and the lives of others, that's God's plan for this world, that we would be the difference makers because we introduce others to that powerful message of Jesus Christ, the one who is our sufficiency, the one who stretched his arms on that cross and said, this is how much I love you. This is how much I care. Come and enjoy the fruits of my labors for you. Christ gave all that he had to give so that we would have the richest of blessings in this world and the world beyond. Now is the time to consider, in your life, what could you give up? What could you sacrifice that would leave more room for God to fill in that space? One last Bible reference from Philippians chapter 4, where the Apostle Paul talks about finding the secret of contentment. He knew what it was like to have plenty he knew what it was like to be in need, but he had learned the secret, no matter what the circumstance, to be content, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christ, Paul's sufficiency. Christ, your sufficiency as well. All that you need, all that you desire in this world and beyond, God will meet the need. God will meet your every desire in ways that are truly meaningful and not distract you from Christ, but draw you closer to him. Now is the time to consider that more may be less, and less may be more. That indeed life may be fuller and more complete with less things in your life that distract you from God and bring into your life the very things that draw you closer to God. Yes, less 
is more, with God at the very center. May the God of grace give you your needs, and may you find the richness of joy and hope and contentment in Christ today and every day. Amen.